Hi, I'm Travis, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Maxim Integrated. When designing a battery-powered system, it's usually a good idea to add a fuel gauging IC so you can accurately monitor the battery's state of charge. Maxim's fuel gauges with the Model Gauge M5 algorithm provide the highest accuracy by combining the short-term precision of Coulomb counting with the long-term stability of voltage-based fuel gauging. Up until now, a visual battery indicator required the use of a host controller, but now with the MAX17263, you get the same fuel gauging accuracy and an intelligent LED driver in a single package, no host controller required. In this video, I'll show you the features of the MAX17263's LED driver and show you how to configure them. First off, let's talk about why a built-in LED driver indicator is so useful. If you have to use your system's main processor to control the LEDs, you'll be wasting processing power and GPIO pins. The other option, adding an auxiliary microcontroller to handle this, adds cost and space to your design. With a MAX17263, you can offload that processing power and let your main processor remain in a low power state. There's also a push button feature so you can even check the battery charge when the rest of the system is powered off. Next, let's go over the LED Charlie plexing circuit, which interestingly, was developed by Charlie Allen right here at Maxim Integrated in 1995. Charlie plexing is a way of controlling a large number of LEDs with a small number of tri-state output pins. In this case, we can control 12 LEDs with only four pins. In this circuit, only one LED is lit at a time by applying output logic to two of the pins and setting the others to high impedance. For example, to light LED 3, we would need to apply a high voltage to L1 and a low voltage to L2 so that current flows through the bias resistor and LED 3. Because only one LED is on at a time, we can share bias resistors if the LEDs are identical. If the LEDs are different, then they each need their own bias resistor. Another nice feature of this circuit is its flexibility. We can populate as many LEDs as we want, and the MAX17263 will automatically detect them at power up. So if we only want five LEDs, then we would populate LED 0 through LED 4 and leave the rest as open circuits. Now that I've gone over the basics, I'll use the MAX17263 evaluation kit to demonstrate the various features and explain them as I go. For this demo, I'll be using the evaluation board with its included RJ11 cable and USB adapter, a lithium battery, and my PC. I have a single cell battery, so I'll connect it across the PAC plus 1S and PAC minus terminals on the board. But before I connect the battery, I need to set the number of LEDs to use by flipping these switches over here. I want to use 10 LEDs, so I'll flip the first 10 switches to the on position. I stuck a strip of paper over the LEDs so that it's easier for the camera to pick up. Watch carefully as I connect the battery, and you'll see the LEDs flash briefly during the automatic detection cycle. And there it was. By default, the LEDs will indicate the battery status when I press the button. So here we can see that I have a full battery based on its open circuit voltage. Now let's connect the RJ11 cable and USB adapter and open the GUI. I'm using the easy battery characteristics since I didn't characterize my battery and it's still very accurate. Now let's head over to the LED configuration tab and I'll show you the features. The first thing I want to talk about is LED mode. By default, a button press turns on the LEDs for the LED termination time set down here. So if I change this to 2.8 seconds, that's how long they'll stay on when I push the button. I can also set direct push button control, which will keep the LEDs on when I hold the button down. In both of these states, you can use the checkbox here to keep the LEDs on when the battery is charging. For now, I'm going to force the LEDs on so I can demonstrate some more features. The animation mode gives you some options on how the LEDs light up, and the step size sets the speed. This fill bars animation does this, and if I change the step size to 3, it goes 3 times faster. The breathing LEDs animation fades them in and out like this, or you can combine them like this. Okay, let's reset the normal behavior and check out the other features. The grayscale feature adds half steps by dimming the last LED. This lets you get higher state of charge resolution for a given number of LEDs. With 10 LEDs, the first half step would be at 97.5%. Right now the battery is at 97%, so if I toggle the setting, you can see LED 9 going between full and half brightness. 
If it's hard to distinguish between a full lit and a dim LED, you can enable the gray blink box to blink the last LED to indicate a half step instead. On the top right of the page, we have an LED brightness slider with 32 steps. The brightness is voltage compensated, so as your battery voltage drops, the brightness will stay constant. The empty blink option will blink LED zero instead of showing zero bars so that you know you're getting a valid reading. The speed of all these blinking features is also controlled by the LED animation time. The last feature here is the empty LED. This is typically a different color and lights up when the indicator reaches zero bars. There's one last feature that's not in the GUI, but I want to mention it. There's a custom LED configuration register that lets you program which LEDs to light up. This lets you program custom animations or set your own LED transition points. And that about sums it up. Now you know how to use the MAX17263 as a single chip solution for both fuel gauging and driving an LED battery indicator. You learned about Charlie flexing LED circuits and the flexible features of the MAX17263's LED driver. For more information, check out the product page link below. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.